next poem um, is a poem that's kind of covertly feminist poem. Um, and I wrote it, uh, I'd been to a, uh, a workshop with the poet Dermot Bolger and he wanted us all to write a poem about our mother's hands. And I couldn't get the poem to come out at all. And, and I went, I went kind of sod it. And, and I, I made my mother's hands fall off. And then the poem came out of that. And the poem's done really well since then. It, it was in the um, Sunday Tribune, which was the the New Irish Writing Hennessy, so I was shortlisted there, and then it was in my collection, and the collection went to the Forward Prize in the UK, and then it was highly commended in the Forward Prize this this past year in 2016. So it's had a it's had a very long um, life, and my mother doesn't know whether she loves it or hates it. So it's about my mother's hands, while it lasted. One day when I was 13, my mother's hands fell off. They rolled under the table, giving the cat a bit of a turn. We looked at them, but they gave no sign, a couple of twitches and that was that. Mum stood at the chopping board as still as a goalpost. Dad made a lie on the chaise while he went to put on the potatoes. She lay holding her bloody stumps high so they wouldn't make a mess of the gold velvet. Dad cooked the dinner and dished up. We gave her a plate too, but how could she eat it? Don't mind me, she said. I gave her a bite of my ham and all of my broccoli. Dad asked she, he should call the doctor. I don't want to make a fuss. The cat jumped on her lap, but having no hands, mum couldn't stroke her nor tip her off. She rubbed her head against my mother's cheek, then left to wind in and out of my legs instead, purring, which she never did before. You go off and enjoy yourself, Mum said. So I went and watched Top of the Pops with the door shut, tied up my school blouse and danced on the rug like Pan's people and didn't turn down the volume for the loud ones. Dad asked if she wanted to go to the pub. I don't want to be in the way, she said, and read the same page of the paper over and over. The next day I made my own school lunch and had toast for breakfast instead of Weetabix. Dad put Mum's hands neatly in a Tupperware box and stored them next to the lentils. Don't worry about me, said Mum, I'll get by. Weeds grew, dust gathered, the cat shed ginger hairs. We lived on fish and chips and Chinese. Dad shopped and washed, I cooked and cleaned. We gave up ironing and cabbage and mowing the lawn. Mum's stumps kneeled up neat nicely. On the shelf next to the mouldy lentils, her hands shriveled like marigold seeds. Then the cat caught a blackbird, ate it, sicked it up all over the hall floor. We stared at the lake of vomit and feathers. It was good while it lasted, Mum sighed. She opened the Tupperware with her teeth, screwed both hands back in and filled the bucket with hot soapy water. <laughs>